She looks metallic. 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 Though I can quite recall of the night sensation. Welcome to the shop. In this episode, we have uh, Olivia Lux, future owner of the biggest organic farm in the United States after being thrown under the bus by the edit and her fellow sisters. What is funny about this is that they threw under the bus also her family. So it's probably going to be a family owned business. We have the next level of elevation for our hero, Simone. One of the best acting challenge that we have ever had on this show, possibly, some crazy confessionals, including one temporal incursion from our usual spiky hair rosé. Then we have some fairly good cryptics, that's refreshing, and that moment in Antak that kept viewers on the edge of their seat for all the wrong reasons. So, Utica has been just eliminated, we are back in the workroom, and uh, it's a perfect time for Candy to take a little bit of a dump on Aja and Dahlia. I mean, you can think everything you want about Candy Muse, but she does have nerve. The rose is such a, like, a drag race staple. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my god, work! The gag is, I don't even think Aja and Dahlia won a challenge on their season either. I don't think so either. So, I'm over the moon. Yeah. She definitely have nerves. I will give her that. Immediately after this, we jump to RuPaul telling us what will be the maxi challenge for this episode. The queens will have to act in Henny, I Shrunk the Drag Queen. What's interesting about this is that we don't have mini advertisement this episode. I wonder why that happened. Did they run out of money? Nobody knows. Interestingly enough, the queens will assign the parts themselves, which is refreshing as well. But of course, there is a little bit of a catch to it. We're looking over the scripts and we're realizing that these characters are very familiar. Immediately after that, through a confessional, Gothic has a rebuttal by pointing out that Olivia chose another shy and apologetic character. The judges have been telling Olivia that every time she gets up there, she gives this apologetic shy girl thing. And that's what this ginger ale roll is. So if I were her, I would not be trying to do that. Yeah. And to that, Candy retittles by explaining why she should be America's next drag superstar. <laughs> the villain, crazy, delusional. That's me. Now, Gothmik has a lot of nerves as well by calling out Olivia, because as we are going to see, she is going to be the same one-note character over and over again this episode as well. And talking about Candy, who defines herself as the villain, crazy and delusional, well, I'm happy she said it on screen. Because we've been joking about it since like 10 episodes by saying that Candy's brand is drama and delusion on the runway. So when I told you she's aware of the brand and she knows how to use it, this is final proof. Thankfully, this is final proof. It's a good thing that we got this confessional. Of course, we cannot go on without adding some fake laughs on one of the Rosé's jokes. It's funny that they have the camera pointing at Candy while the fake Candy laugh is added on the background. I will say, out of the two of you, I would definitely say Simone's the smart one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll take it. But you know, it's a little bit of elevation for Rosé. After all, by the end of this episode, she's going to end up in the top four. She's even going to be winning the episode. So. 
we need to give her a little bit of a push, just a little bit. After this, since we're talking about crazy confessionals, we have an incursion from Simone feeling her Britney Spears inspired fantasy while telling us about her insecurities. Of course we have a copious amount of uh, pictures because you need to be focused, you need to be seeing that she is part of the house of Avalon, she knows Gigi Good, they are part of the same house and we have this very vulnerable moment and very constructed vulnerable moment for Simone which is going to be a common theme across the episode because by the end of it she will have to rise again with a newfound strength to fight her battle to the top. It feels like things are just falling apart around me. I can't help but like think about my house, the house of Avalon. We're such perfectionists in everything that we do and I don't want to let anyone down and I don't want to look bad and then like disappoint everyone. <sighs> Storytelling, what can I tell you? It's uh, storytelling. In all of this, in all of this, meanwhile, Candy is basically transcending to another plane of existence <laughs> by virtue of just summoning a mental image of Joey J. This is, I mean, I don't know what went on with Confessionals this episode. It's just crazy. After this, we jump directly to filming, where we can get a taste of um, three queens doing exactly the same characterizations over and over and over and over again. And one confessional from Olivia throwing a little bit of shade to Simone, but in reality, the editors are really throwing some shade at her, because she makes a comment about Simone's characterization saying, oh, Simone is out and she has her factory voice. Oh yes, here is my smile, but I'm also throwing her under the bus, which by the end of the day is more a push down on Olivia than Simone herself. After this, we have five minutes of uh, Candy Muse uh, screaming, which is funny. <laughs> I think it was one of the best part of this whole filming. And please, Keep a look on how Carlson and Michelle are actually reacting to this. Because they are like, yes, Candy, do it again, do it again. They're having a fun, they're getting their life. No! <laughs> my beautiful wickedness! Again. One more time, one more time! No! <laughs> my wicked beauty! No, you're beautiful wickedness! No! My beautiful wickedness! One more time! time. <laughs> By the end of the episode, they will be critiquing her for this exact moment because they were really directing her. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? We, we saw this. We have a pair of eyes. We saw this. You pushed her because it was funny. But, you know, it's the cryptics. Now, in all of this, you might think, okay, this is fun. But don't forget, Olivia has to go home by the end of this episode. So, of course, it's time to shit on Olivia a little bit. And we are hit with uh, Olivia asking a question and everybody is bitch facing. Everybody is pissed off at Olivia because Olivia is being unreasonable. And on top of that, we have five different confessionals from uh, all of the queens but Rosé basically telling us why Olivia is not a good person, why Olivia is being disingenuous in asking her questions. So first we have Candy Muse telling us that nobody really smiles and is happy 24-7, which I agree. But the fact that this confessional was put in this specific moment and edited in this specific way is used to send a clear message to the viewers. Then after that we have Simone telling us that uh, Olivia is the Hercule of the group, which is, of course, really nice of Simone. I'm sure it was a joke, but, you know, the edit is the edit. All of this happens in a, in a matter of two minutes. Then after this, we have Gottmik imitating Olivia's voice to tell us that Olivia is being disingenuous in asking where the camera is and where she should be looking. Then we have Simone telling us that she knows exactly all of these things. She is just taking advantage of the moment to just be a diva. And then Gottmik again, calling Olivia a divalicious. Five. 
after everyone is bitch facing to Olivia's questions, we are hit with five confessionals. Because don't forget, we need to take a huge dump on Olivia this episode. She has to go home. By the end of the episode, the audience has to be convinced that she deserves to go home. But doing this kind of edit, that was a little bit extra. And uh, we are just starting. The best is coming later. After filming, we are back in the workroom and it's time for more humanizing moments, especially for Simone. So we see Simone crying during a confessional because she's afraid of being eliminated. Of course, it's time for a little bit more pictures in case you didn't see them the first time. You have to remember where she's coming from, which one is her drag house and of course that she is friend with Gigi Good, you know, she was in the top three last season. So we have to keep all of this in mind. So while I do understand the emotions that go through Simone, the stress, the situation, that's completely understandable. But of course the, the edit has to dial it up to 100 because she is our hero and she needs our attention right now. Because by the end of this episode, she will rise like a phoenix one once more. She is the hero after all. This is part of her headed. Another moment that we have is Gottmik and Candy talking about misrepresentation of trans people and queer people and gay people in media before Drag Race. <laughs> Which is another shilling moment for the show. Because they're like, before all of this, all that was in television was trans people getting killed, gay people being hookers, or being flamboyant, or being all about shopping. Which, I must tell you, I agree with all of that. I thought exactly the same, and this is exactly the same reason why I fell in love with this show in the first place. It just sounds a little bit suspicious that in a matter of two episodes, if you remember last episode, we are shilling again for Drag Race, as if the viewership is kind of going down. <laughs> Moving on, we have the best part of the whole show, which is the maxi challenge, the acting challenge. I thought it was fantastic. It was creative, it was written fairly well, making fun of pop culture, if you get the reference, of course, if you're old enough to know the reference. It uh, was self-referential to the show, but in all the good ways. It was stupid, it was campy, it was really reminiscent of that old drag race we all fell in love with. The editing for the challenge was pretty good. Of course, it was nothing incredible in terms of special effects. But for once, it's nice to see the editors actually put in the work and not for shitting on one of the contestants, because that is what they are best known for on this show. I think this whole challenge was a, a fantastic example of a fan service done, done right, with the reference to Ben de la Creme, India Ferra's Breastplate from Season 3, the Reading Challenge, which is a staple of Drag Race, it was really one of the best acting challenges I think that we've ever had on this show. And a great example of what can happen if you hire people that can actually write. So I hope in the writing room at World of Wonder people are taking notes because this is exactly what we want to see. It was a great example of where this show could be if they actually put effort in preparing it and writing it. But the queens were absolutely not on par with the material and the effort that was put for this challenge. Everyone but Rosé could basically go home because Candy Muse was Candy Muse. Everybody noticed that. Simone was again that one note character that we've seen from the beginning of the season. As Olivia said, the factory woman, which is a good character, I will give her that, but if you are that same character once, twice, thrice, and then it goes on and on and on, it starts to become boring. At this point, I need to see something else. I know that all of the queens were basically typecasted in this, but that doesn't justify the fact that you didn't really put any effort in creating a character. And of course, Gottmik was the usual whiny character, which uh, got really on my nerves. I didn't find her funny in the slightest, she, it, she was annoying. 
she was she was annoying i could see the effort in there but the character was just so annoying the best part was when she was sneezing because basically she wasn't speaking but at least all three of them put some kind of effort in their part i mean it was acceptable in the end if you didn't know who simone candy muse and got mix are if you just tuned in for this episode you would think well Okay, of course, they're not professional professional actors, but they didn't do a bad job. Apart from Rosé, who did amazing, and uh, apart from Candice Simone and Gottmik, who brought the same energy, Olivia, for me, was the absolute worst. Olivia was just terrible. There, there is no other way to describe it. She cannot act. She is not believable. The delivery was stiff. There was no commitment whatsoever to the character. It was painful to watch. Honestly, it was painful to watch. Olivia might have many talents, might have huge room for improvement because she's still a young queen, but she cannot act for shit. That's, that's, that's just how it is. That's the truth. So let's be real about it. Now, after this, we move on to the cryptics arguably the best part of the stream. First of all, I agreed with most of the cryptics from the judges, which is something strange, because usually they say everything is the contrary of everything, but for some reason this episode, the vast majority were all on point. I was shocked. I was shocked. I didn't expect this. And to Simone, they said that she nailed... Oh, spoiler alert. I didn't agree, the most I didn't agree with were the one for Simone. The cryptics for her acting are that she nailed it, she's a natural talent, she popped, she was very funny, there were subtleties and nuances in her performance, which I guess if you don't know the factory woman, maybe that's the impression that you would have. This actually came from the guest judge, so I'm going to give her a pass on this. And her character felt like a real person. And I was like, no, it, it it didn't feel like a real person. It was the factory woman. It wasn't a real person. But the best part is yet to come, because after saying that the character felt like a real person, they continue with, while others were one note. So while they are critiquing Simone, they're throwing everybody else under the bus. Because, you know, she's the hero. She's the hero, so... <laughs> of course, everyone else, in comparison to Simone was one note and what's funny about it it's that they don't even say everybody else but rosé because you would think at the end of this rosé has to win so you would think well they could at least have said everybody else but rosé no 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 everybody else was one note while simone's character felt like a real person <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's why we call them the cryptiques. For the runway, Simone's cryptiques are she was amazing, she was fashion, she was spectacular, she has a gorgeous silhouette, the dress was flattering and it was a great night for her. Now, I liked her dress. Don't get me wrong. You know that I have the sense of fashion that I have. I wouldn't even go as far as calling it a sense of fashion. I have a sense. <laughs> Let's call it like that. But I liked what she served on the runway. I think she looked beautiful. And they are right. The silhouette is spectacular. She always killed the damn walk. There is you, you can never clock Simone on that runway. But there is something about it. It's the silhouette. It fits great, but it's always the same. It's always the same since episode one. And I don't have a problem with it, but if you're going to criticize other queens for their silhouette, then you have to apply the same critique to everybody else. Otherwise, you are using a double standard, and that's not acceptable. That's not respectful of the queens or the viewers who are actually watching the show. Now, other than that, her acting for me was one note. It was the same character over and over, but at least it was acceptable. At least it fit somewhat the challenge. I wanted a little bit more. I wanted to see something new. I thought this was a great opportunity for experimenting. But, um, you know, all in all, she wasn't that bad. But taking into account all of this, I think that she was at best safe at best, if even a low safe. Not a bottom, but at least a low safe. Compared to Rosé, there was there was no comparison whatsoever. Next cryptics, we have 
Olivia. And to Olivia, they said about her acting that she knows how to do her character and she does it very well. And this is one of the only cryptics that I do not agree. The character that Olivia has is not believable, is not performed very well, it's not convincing, so I understand that they want to give a positive cryptique, but this makes no sense, because her character is not done well, point blank. It was just terrible. I, I cannot find any word to describe it. It was not even cringe. It was just terrible. And then they continue saying that they've seen this character a lot. They would have loved to see someone dark and evil, which I completely agree with it, as I told you the episode before already. They wanted more versatility. She should have taken it one step further. They wanted more. And she was unable to put in those peaks and valleys in her performance. And please, keep your attention on this. She was unable to put in those peaks and valleys in her performance, and they think that she needed more time, like Simone said. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? You are critiquing Olivia. Why are you bringing it up, Simone? So they are elevating Simone at the expense of Olivia. But you know, this whole episode is only about taking a huge dump on Olivia. So since we are already taking a huge dump on her, let's elevate Simone by contrast, because why not? Why not? <laughs> About the runway, they said it was stunning, it looked gorgeous, lots of details, but it was not about pockets, and I completely agree with it. In this episode, for me, she really is peaks and valleys, and with that, what I mean is that the runway was, was simply beautiful. I think this is the best she has ever looked on that runway. There is nothing wrong with it. I cannot find a single flaw. The only thing that I can tell is that it didn't scream pockets. They were right. It didn't scream pockets. But other than that, she is easily the best looking queen on that runway tonight. All in all, she deserved a bottom placement, without any doubt. Next up is Rosé, and to Rosé they said that she rose to the occasion, she was fun, she had great physical comedy, she was very prepared, professional, an excellent actor, and I'm like, yes, yeah, so don't push it too far, don't, don't push it too far, she was good. You know, on RuPaul's Drag Race, the bar is being better than RuPaul, which is not a very high bar to begin with, and she was a pleasure and a joy to work with which doesn't say much about her performance, but I'm going to take it. That's okay, I'm going to take it. The runway, they said it was fun, whatever it means. They loved the hair. She had shape and proportions, and no, she didn't really have proportions. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> they loved it. it. Somebody said it's my wet dream, and I don't even want to think about it. And her outfit was the best she ever wore. Which, yes, I agree with it. And, of course, the best cryptics from our panel of judges is she was doing what she's supposed to do. Which is a favorite from this panel of judges. What does it mean? At least once in every episode we have somebody saying she was doing exactly what she's supposed to do. Come on, you can do better than that. You have people giving you suggestions through that, that here piece. Come on. Anyway, I agree with almost everything about this. The outfit was really good. I was not exactly blown away, but it did scream pockets and there was no shape to it. She looked like a triangle. Not blown away, no. But without a doubt, she was the best in that damn challenge and she deserved to win for this challenge. Next up is uh, Candy Muse. And to Candy, they say her acting was a delight. But she was just being candy and she could have gone further. And this is why they kept pushing her. You know what they mean when they say this is why they kept pushing her? They are rewriting the narrative as if that moment was them pushing candy. And I was like, no, it was for shits and giggles. That's what it was. I don't know what went wrong in the editing room because there there is a huge mismatch in the narrative that they are trying to push because in the beginning it was for giggles but now it was the judges trying to push Candy to get more. And you see, this is a prime example of uh, how the narrative can quickly shift depending on what we are shown and how we are shown it. 
But I do agree with them, except the fact that she was a delight. I don't like Candy Muse's acting. I don't think it's believable. I think it's stiff. And it's Candy. When I, when I see Candy Muse acting, I don't see a character. I see Candy because she brings no characterization whatsoever. But at least it wasn't painful to watch. You could see that she put some effort in doing it. Again, if you don't know who Candy is, her acting was perfectly acceptable. Now to the runway. They said that it was hard to read a runway. Look how nice they were. That it didn't work, it was ill-fitting, the M is off, it was sloppy, it was not elevated enough, it doesn't work, and it wasn't good even in that abstract fashion way. They are throwing Candy Muse completely under the bus. Whatever that thing is that she is wearing, that's I don't I don't I don't even have the fluency to, to, to describe how I feel about it. It was awful. It was awful. <laughs> there is nothing to say about it. It was just awful. And one thing that the judges didn't say was about that damn wig. While I do like the way the cut is styled with longer hair on one side and shorter on the other, and I do love the color, it's a flat wig. This is, I don't know if it's the third or fourth time that we see the same thing. If you are a big girl, flat wigs are not your friend. Because it's about proportion. This is really drag 101. If you put such a flat wig on your head, your face is going to look bloated. You are a big girl, you need to go for big hair. That's one of those feedback that I would have expected this panel of judges to actually give to Candy. Because after all, she has to be in the bottom this episode, so anything goes. Then give her an actual critique that she can use to become better at doing drag. Now, next up, Gottmik. What did they say about Gottmik? She was always the same character. Hmm, that's interesting. But at least she had peaks and valleys. And I was like, Carlson, what the hell are you bouncing on? There were no peaks and valleys in Gothmic's performance. She was the same character. She was one note, like everybody else but Rosé. So what the hell are you talking about? And then they say that her physical acting sold it, which I will agree with, and that she has comedic timing. I oh, will agree with that as well, as we've seen in the roast as well. The runway was fun, was fashion, she has a sense of humor, she executed it perfectly, it's a cultural reference, she is creative, inventive, spectacular, brilliant, uh, glamorous, they are, they are eating her up from top to bottom, which I completely agree with. I think she really was the best on this runway. And uh, even though I loved Olivia's outfit, I think that Gottmik's outfit actually told a story while also reading as pockets. And uh, whatever she's wearing, it's made of watches. It was really good. There is nothing you can say about it. If anything, I was expecting more on Gottmik's makeup because she's shown incredible things on the runway, so we got used to incredible things. And that makeup looked a little bit too simple for Gottmik, but it still looks really good. By the end of the day, even though the performance was one note, being the best on the runway, she deserved a high position. Not a win because it's an acting challenge and, you know, Rosé was there. Now after this, they asked the queens, who should go home tonight? And of course, of course, it's time to shit a little bit more on Olivia, because we didn't shit on Olivia enough during this episode, so let's shit on Olivia a little bit more. When they ask Olivia who should go home, everybody, judges including, are bitch-facing. <laughs> everybody is bitch-facing to Olivia. They are already setting the mood, and if that's not enough, we have like 30 seconds of the most uncomfortable moment on that runway with Olivia completely silent. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I thought she was desperately trying to squeeze a tear without much of a success doing it. That's how it looked to me. I'm sorry, Olivia, I know how it sounds, but that's, that's what it looked like to me. 
It was like she was desperately trying to cry without, without, without managing to do it. There was no real need for all of this bitch facing going around and even a confessional from Gothmik throwing Olivia under the bus when, you know, whoever has a pair of eyes can see that, yeah, she's trying to cry and it's not working. And that would have been completely enough. But, you know, we have to take a dump on Olivia this episode, so anything goes. And, of course, we are not, we are not done. <laughs> we are not done with Olivia. There will be more. So, while Olivia is struggling to squeeze a tear and actually saying a name, everybody else is bitch-facing, Gottmik is calling her out during a confessional, and uh, in all of this... We have a relatable moment with our hero Simone, because, you know, why not elevate Simone a little bit more? So we see that Simone removed her shoes on the runway. Of course it's Simone, so if we can use it for making her a little bit more relatable, why not? Because after all, she is the hero. So, relatable hero takes off the shoes, shoes are painful, ha ha ha, shoes are painful for me as well. And uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. So after the cryptics, after this relatable moment, it's time to dive in into Untucked. And of course, Untucked is another perfect opportunity to take another dump on Olivia Lux because we need to double down a little bit more. So we have this surreal moment in which Simone is trying to push a little bit of a narrative. She goes to Olivia and she said, well, Olivia, I have a feeling that you are holding back. I don't know if it's anger or sadness. And I'm like, Simone, what the hell? I mean, come on. <laughs> so Olivia explains herself by saying, no, 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 it's not anger. It's... It's a sadness because of this situation, and I came here to explore. The moment she uses the word explore, Rosé immediately burns her by saying, yes, yes, it's all nice and good that you came here to explore, but nobody else came here to explore. After seeing Rosé burning Olivia, of course, the editors had to double down. So we have this surreal moment in which we see Olivia's family re-enact their video message for Olivia and everybody is laughing everybody is like oh look they are as much divas as Olivia and I'm thinking what the fuck are you talking about all of them that record a message for these queens they refilm it over and over and over again it's even stitched together but when you switch cameras you don't realize that's actually a hard cut in their message they do it for everyone but of course it's olivia olivia has to go home and every chance is appropriate to take a dump on olivia and her family of course which makes them look disingenuous as olivia which is part of her storyline you know she's the one who is constantly smiling and then being a saboteur where no when nobody is really looking she is the diva so of course this storyline carries on into her own family and they laugh about it they play it nice about it but people from home are going to get another confirmation of the fact that she is disingenuous and i'm thinking yes of course I believe she is disingenuous. I believe all of them are disingenuous, except a couple of exceptions. But it basically ends up there. And after this, we reach the lowest point that this show has ever gotten, in my opinion. Now, why was this moment so bad? Well, from the way it was presented and edited, it fostered a conversation that was toxic. Because online, people, the only thing they're talking about is, oh, was Candy faking it? Was it real? Was it not real? Did she do it to gain something? Or uh, was she really feeling that bad? And this is the only conversation that people have had online since this episode has gone on now you have to understand one thing i don't give a shit if it was real or if it was fake because that's not the point the point is when somebody comes to you and saying that she has those kind of physical symptoms it's not a matter of opinion it's about giving care many of you might not know this but the symptoms of panic attacks are really similar 
to other life-threatening situations. So you need to go to a hospital, you need to get checked. That thing that we've been shown over and over and over again, it doesn't help you in differentiate if she is in a life-threatening situation or she's having a panic attack. And it doesn't even educate the public in understanding how to make the difference. It looks like all of these things were there for milking the situation, were there for drama. What happens when you have people that feel like that? They need to go to the hospital, point blank. I don't care if you think it's fake. I don't care if you think it's done for a reason. That's not the point. As an external person, your job is to deliver care. At the end of the day, if these people are being disingenuous, they are the piece of shit, not you. It's disgraceful that the only thing people have been talking online is, oh, was it fake? Was it not fake? It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. Now, I want to thank Grover for uh, sending us a link to a live that Candy actually made for explaining this situation in which she actually said that the production offered to carry her to a hospital where she can be actually checked to see what's really going on and she refused which is completely in her right to do. Medical care is not something that is forced on people. You can always refuse it. So she decided to stay there. She explained that this whole situation lasted for, uh, I think she said a couple of hours while she was recovering it, because the problem was that this was still during the lockdown. So if she went to the hospital, she wouldn't have been allowed to come back to the competition. She would have been eliminated. Now, I'm not here to judge if she was being reckless with her health or not. It's her choice and it's her right to make her own choices. And that is something that you cannot take away from anybody. With that said, whoever was in charge of the editing for this segment completely fucked it up. Because if I didn't know about that live, my only thought about this whole thing was what the fuck is happening? Why nobody is taking a, an ECG of Candy Muse and see what the fuck is going on and if she's really in danger instead of this portable bullshit that we are shown over and over and over again. It's not a good look on the show. Now, point done. Moving on from this, back to the main stage. Rosé wins, and deservingly so, and she celebrates with a temporal incursion with our usual spiky hair Rosé. You thought we wouldn't see her. I thought we wouldn't see her. But she has been in every episode talking about the actual episode because, you know, they can take snippets and just stitch them everywhere. No, 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 don't get it wrong. Whenever she appears in an episode, she is almost always referring to the actual episode. After this, we are to the actual lip sync. So it's Olivia versus Candy. Now, the choice for the song is curious because it's strong enough by Cher. And uh, thankfully, Dinali is coming to tell us what she thinks about the choice of a song this episode by going it's almost like strong enough should have been for a disco week huh <laughs> and i'm like yes denali it really makes you think it really makes you think and i'm happy that queens are starting to speak out because you know, World of Wonder cannot fuck all of them at once because they speak out. What happened to Max? What happened to Pearl? It cannot happen to all of the queens. Because otherwise they have no queens left. All of them can dish out a little bit of tea, a little bit at the time, as long as they all of them do it. I hope that going forward this is something that we get more of. Because World of Wonder has been getting crazy with the bullshit on this show, on every level. And it's mostly disrespectful to the queens who spend money to be on the show, who put their career and livelihood on the line to be on the show, and this disrespectful to us, the viewers. Props to Dinali and keep it up. Now, did you like the lip sync? So and so. It was a good song, I like the song, but I think Olivia really did better than Candy. Now, should we take what happened to Candy into account? 
Uh, yes and no. That really depends on how you watch this show and which kind of sensitivity you want to have relating to the show. Because I can accept that you take it into account or not taking it into account. Personally, I try to be objective and just judge the performance for what I see. What I see was that Olivia did did a fantastic job. There was simply no comparison with Candy. Of course, it doesn't help that Candy lip synced three times already. So we already seen her, we know what she does on the stage and it's getting boring. That's just how it is, it's getting boring. On a side note, this time she knew the words, which was refreshing. You have to imagine the moment. It's me and Mr. Invisible on the table watching this lip sync and me rolling back the lip sync to check Candy's lips and he was like, oh yes, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but Candy did know the words for this song. Of course, if you don't know the words to Strong Enough by Cher, you should go home immediately. There is no excuse for that. And that was all for this episode. Of course, I didn't include the speculations, we did that in the live stream, but the season has been already over for, what, like three weeks already, so I didn't really see the point in including them. I hope to have the last two episodes out as soon as possible. As usual, a huge thanks to our patrons for supporting the channel, and if you would like to support us as well, there is a link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon.